Sup everyone, this is Draco Evo back yet again with some latest Manchester United news and transfer speculation. And we have a confirmation that was confirmed last night in regards to signing of Ahmad Diallo. As you can see, there is a question mark on his shirt number, but he will be given the number 19 shirt. There has been protected, uh, well, uh, sort of like a rumoured um, cost. You know, we all know that pretty much it was costing £38 million. However, uh, Manchester United reached an agreement with Atlanta over a move for Diallo in previous transfer window. And the club has now confirmed the winger's arrival. So he's the first post-Brexit signing for Manchester United. And apparently, um, he, uh, not apparently, he has signed a four and a half year, I think, yeah, four and a half year deal. Um, there's some medicals to be done, some finer details, but he's pretty much signed. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, has come out and, and said, um, you know, things like it will take time for him to adapt, but his speed, vision and fantastic dribbling ability will stand him in good stead to make the transition. He is a player with all of the raw attributes that are needed to be an important player for Manchester United in the years to come. Ahmad Diallo has tweeted out that he, I cannot wait to start, as you can see in his United kit. Look, with Ahmad Di Diallo, I haven't seen much of it. I'm sure a lot of you guys have not even heard of him. Same with myself before we signed him. He has been um, signed for a fee of £38 million. However, I believe... I believe £80 million is paid up front with another roughly around 19 or so million pound in instalments and other particular bonuses, etc, etc. However, as Manchester United fans out there, we need to be very careful with Ahmad Diallo in a sense that don't expect him to come in and, and light the whole Premier League up, right? Don't expect that. It took a long time for Cristiano Ronaldo, someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, who was pretty much at his age, firepower, raw dribbling abilities, etc, etc, playing on the right side, <coughs> sorry, on the wing. But it took it took a few years before he even kick-started. So we need to be patient with Diallo. We cannot be saying things like, you know, oh, let's have Diallo start every game or, you know, where's Diallo, etc, etc. This is not a sim, you know, this is a similar signing to Ronaldo more so than a similar signing to Donny van der Beek, where Donny van der Beek was expected to start Unfortunately, he's not starting. I'm sure he will start eventually. But with Diallo, we need to kind of be careful of how we approach his in his, him in terms of oops, in terms of uh, lineup, etc., etc. Diallo did come out and said, after waiting since the summer, it is a finally it is finally a dream come true to complete my move to Manchester United. I am hugely ambitious, and there is so much that I wanted to achieve in the game. When I spoke to the manager, I knew that I had joined the perfect club. So he's excited to be here, as you'd expect. Eric Bailly came out and gave his support, saying that I'm ready to help him. For me, it's very important. I remember Rooney, Ibra, Antonio Valencia, players like that helped me when I arrived. So when young players arrive, it's very important to help them. So th the consensus is that he's a, he's a very good talent coming in, he cannot wait to start. Players are going to help him. Oligna Solskjaer is going to look after him. He himself has said that he, he's seen him several times. Um, he scattered him extensively. Not sure about that, but it is what it is. You know, to spend that much on a teenager clearly shows that he, he has raw abilities. He has talent. Um, but he's finally been confirmed in regards to a couple of other outs in, in Manchester United. Brandon Williams. So Brandon Williams uh, is considered getting loaned out to various clubs. Everton has emerged, according to this report, um, as a January transfer target, <clears throat> loan target. Um, the 20-year-old has been heavily linked with a move away from Old Trafford in recent weeks with a number of clubs in the Premier League and across Europe said to be keen on securing his signature this month. Look, if he's not playing, if he's not even featuring for the club, it is, it is going to be good Give him match time at another Premier, sorry, another Premier League club. I think it will do him wonders to go to a club like Everton, you know, Everton, Villa, you know, Newcastle, the clubs like that where he can learn, get some experience, come back a better, hopefully a better, stronger player. I think he has the potential. He has talent. He's a youth product of Manchester United. He has fight and fire in his belly. I think he does need. I don't know what has happened behind the background, but I think he needs game time. Other reports are saying that uh, Phil Jones and Jesse Lingard is a target for clubs like Newcastle, who has emerged. That's the latest transfer on out on Manchester United. It, they are deadwoods. The, the quicker we get rid of them, the better, I think, for the squad. It will allow the players like Diallo, Listry, and other youngsters to kind of step up and um, not be 
behind so many pecking orders, if you know what I mean. But those are the latest outs for Manchester United transfer news in regards to potential ins. So this report has come out that Max Aaron's to Man United is off. Um, Manchester United, as we know, Fabrizio Romano has confirmed it as well, who is the transfer guru, that United are keen on the right back. Um, but Norwich do not want to sell him as expected mid-season. Why not? It, it, the article goes on to say it's confirmed that the Norwich right back has been someone might not have discussed, but there's not there's been no communication between the two clubs. And a deal and a deal this month month looks unlikely. Um, so the verdict is, you know, Aaron is a player. He's got a lot of quality, and any any deal to sign him is going to cost the club. I think he's going to be a, a, a costly signing, but he's going to be one for the future. However, according to this article, um, that's my other video rendered. Um, according to this particular article, Max Aaron's is a player that Norwich would like to keep. And I'm going to discuss a little bit of, around Max Aaron's. Right, he is a right back. He is one of the brighter prospects in English football on the right back position. He is a very attacking right back. He has a high work rate. He's he's gets into the line byline very quick he he has a lot of potential as a right back a lot of raw potential as a right back he is english so that will help Oli and Solskjaer because he likes his british players but he is also from a championship club norwich who let's face it in this pandemic the lower you go down the league order the clubs will get more and more desperate for money Norwich, I'm not sure if they will do any business. I think it's their way of saying we're not going to sell him, but give us more money and we might sell him. That's going to be the case, especially when Manchester United come in or show some any sort of remote interest in your player. You, you almost double the price. <laughs> That's how it's always been with Manchester United. Everybody knows that United is the richest club in the world, one of the biggest clubs in the world, off the field, um, definitely, commercially, definitely. So people will take advantage of United's finances. I think Max Aaron's is not going to come cheap. I do genuinely believe it's going to be costing around twenty, thirty million pounds to get the right back. Um, if we can come to an agreement in terms of installments, just like we did with uh, Diallo, where on paper he costed thirty eight million pounds, and even myself was like, "Wow, that's a lot of money for an eighteen year old who we haven't really heard of." However, when you break it down, it's it's like eighty million pound up front. And the rest in installments, which is a, a good thing, you know, you know, depending on his performance, what we win, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll get, um, we'll pay the fee. And I think that should be the case with Max Aaron's. Yes, we got Aaron Wan-Bissak on the right back, but we are short on the right back position. We look at the left back position, which is absolutely solid now with Luke Shaw, who has stepped up his game clearly in his competition. On the arrival of Alex Telles, both provide something different. Max Aaron's on the right side can provide that as well. Aaron Wan-Bissaka is better defensively, but Max Aaron's offensively is 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 amazing. Uh, it's better than Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Obviously, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, I'm sure he will learn to be a better attacking fullback. But if you've got the budget, he's in the championship. He, he's he's a pretty much a wonder kid on the right back position, and we need a cover on the right back. God forbid if we have an injury to Aaron Wan-Bissaka, bloody hell, it will it will do the club wonders to have a quality squad depth. You know. Um, moving on to the last bit of news is this particular news coming out. Manchester United, in regards to Casado, so Moises Casado, remember him? So I'm going to read you out and give you my two cents. Manchester United have locked in the signing of Ecuadorian teenager Moises Casado, according to South American football expert Tim Vickery. No idea how good, how reliable Tim Vickery is. Uh, he has been heavily linked with Manchester United in recent weeks. Um, you know, he, he's, he, he's a CDM. Uh, let me just go down. Um, he said it looks like he's locked in for Manchester United. And if he goes through, they have got themselves the real deal. Holy field. <laughs> Only 19, the way the market is going with South American football is the European clubs want to take them as early as possible. They are buying on promise. The fellas, uh, Moises Casado is much more than a promise. He is a reality. He's the first player born in the 21st century to score a goal in South American World Cup qualifiers. Okay, I'm not going to uh, read it much around there, but Casado, um, from from the reports, from what we've been reading, from what I've been reading, he, he looks like a very good CDM, although CDM that plays in a box-to-box -box position, much like what Scott McTominay does for us, much much, much like what 
red dust for us where they sit in front of the defense but mobile enough to um to surge forward and drive forward and that's probably what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is aiming for a player that can be very very mobile very energetic very hard working um to go from midfield to offense to come back to midfield and defend as well at the same time and he's he fits that mold obviously team Vickery is He's a South American football expert. He's clearly trying to sell. Some of his words he used, I was a bit skeptical. But he's clearly trying to sell um, to the media, to Manchester United, high praise for Moises Casado. Look, I don't know the fee that much. There has been strong links. Fabrizio Romano has come out and said the same thing as well. But Manchester United are interested in him. But it's about getting the deal done. We're only in one week, first week of um, January. So long week, long way to go, three weeks to go. Um, he's a youngster, he's 19 years of age, he can develop into the team, and I am sure he's, he'll be one that is going to be one for the future for sure. If we sign him, I'm going to be happy because we're going to have quality players coming in through the ranks, potentially. You know, Max Aarons potentially is going to be a quality player. Casado is definitely going to be a quality player. Uh, Diallo, <laughs> Pellistri, these are all 18 to 19 year old players. We've got Jimmy, James Garner from the USAP. Then we've got a bunch, host of 17, 16, 15 year olds, and Mejbri being one of them, who are fantastic. So there is a platform being built at United, and you can see the vision. You can see the vision. I still feel we need a centre back, an experienced centre back, not not a 16 year old, 17, 18 year old. Someone like a Dyer to Pumacano, I think, would be a fantastic signing for Manchester United. Realistically, we're not going to sign someone like him in the January transfer window, but I think. We do need a centre back, given our um, how light is it, light it is in the centre back position. In terms of the midfield position, Moises Casado occupies the midfield area, but he's one for the future. I think Matic is aging; he's got a couple of more years in his contract. I think a year tops in his legs, in my opinion. So Casado coming in now potentially could learn under Matic and be the one in the future, uh, with Matic um, kind of slowly being phased out of Manchester United. Uh, because the rest of the players, the likes of Fred, McTominay, they're still young. They've still got a lot of years to go. I don't see Casado coming and taking their place. But to take Matic's place, someone for the future to replace, do it now. So in about a year or two ta years' time, Casado would have enough experience, enough knowledge, would have developed further to be able to challenge and push into the first team. That is something I always wanted to see, especially at Manchester United. Youngsters coming in, learning off the trade and making a breakthrough for Manchester United first team. This is the latest Manchester United news now. Thank you so much for everyone that's joined in. As always, catch you guys in the next upload and stay butterfly.